The Dallas County Courthouse has experienced its second riot in 12 days. This one much worse than the first on September 21st. It started about 6.30 last evening and lasted for approximately three hours. And when it was over, 100 inmates had been injured in some form or other. 12 officers had been injured, including one officer suffering a mild heart attack. He's reported in fair condition today. There was one dead prisoner, but it turned out to be of natural causes and was not the result of injury during this riot. At the height of the battle last night, 800 inmates were burning, smashing, looting, just general destruction of the property. Today, we talked to Sheriff Clarence Jones, and we talked about the weapons that were recovered later. Uh, in the last time that we talked to some of these prisoners, uh, uh, some of the things that they talked about are the same things that appeared on page 37A of the Dallas Times-Herald this past Sunday same things that they were talking about. It's the same things that these people were talking about when they moved in down here to our, our complex, uh, which I feel for the express purpose of agitating things such as this. And I think that they probably ought to be proud of themselves this morning. Are you talking about the Dallas Times Herald? No, I said that the, the articles, the things that they said, appeared on page 37A of the Dallas Times Herald. And newspapers are read in this jail. Are you resigned as the sheriff of Dallas County to stand in the middle and be able to do nothing about either side? I think we can do something about uh, our problems here in the jail. And I think that the people are getting tired of it. And as long as I'm going to sit here in this chair, I'm going to run it. There's no question about that. Sheriff Jones and anyone else for that matter was forewarned that this would happen, maybe not last night, but would happen. It came in a press conference with prisoners last Sunday when Jesse Torres Jr., a habitual burglar, made this statement. We just doing something that uh, we believe would help us. If they don't, like I said, we ain't got nothing to lose. They done gave us a, a life sentence. And Sheriff Jones is ready to admit that it could very well happen again, as long as there is outside agitation at his jail. He blames certain SMU students, certain attorneys, and certain peace movements for that outside agitation. From the Dallas County Courthouse in downtown Dallas, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. I think that it's uh, uh, accurate to say that uh, uh, that our club is uh, stressing youth, that we're close to a point where youth is going to be felt, 
as far as uh, inserting, uh, getting into our lineup, and uh, that I think we got some good young players. Uh, I think our we have the nucleus of some uh, of uh, a young pitching staff. Uh, maybe a couple of our younger players might be pressing it to say that they're ready for the big leagues now. But I think people uh, realize that uh, uh, that this club uh, has to go in that direction because uh, they haven't uh, uh, been too good a club uh, with the older players. So uh, I think that it's safe to say that we're going to stress, stress youth. Uh, uh, and I think we're in a pretty good position to do it. Do you think uh, within two or three years you could be a solid contending ball player? Well, it, it, certainly when Minnesota uh, left Washington, they had their outstanding young players coming up, and they were good ball players. Uh, the same thing applies here. But there's one thing about young talent that you always hope it's going to reach here, but sometimes as it's coming, it stops, and you hope that that isn't going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that you're going to find that these young fellows that we have are going to reach the top, and uh, there's no reason why in the next three years we won't improve as a ball club. One of the first uh, speculative aspects of the franchise transfer was that you would go to a front office job. Uh, will you be back as manager next year? Well, I, I would say that probably I will be back as a manager, providing Short wants me there. Uh, I'll be there some in some capacity, uh, uh, I, I know, with a club. and uh, uh, But I would say that probably I'll be the manager. Well, I've been hurting it in practice. We do some shiver drills on our linebacker drills, and and uh, I hit the sled, and, and my hand comes too far back. I've got weak wrist anyway, and then I hurt it in the game. I don't know how I hurt it in the game. So it's not uh, serious, and you will play with this paraphernalia on Saturday? Yes, sir. I hope to get this bandage off. I'd like to play without it if I could. It seems like it's getting away. Now, what do your coaches tell you about the OU running offense? Well, they're just like... Every week they talk about, you know, the, the backs. We've played against some good backs. This this week they've got three or four excellent backs. They're just a complete backfield. But they run the wishbone like, like our offense does, and they do a good job of it. And they haven't been running it long, but they've gotten to where they can just block well and everything on it. So it should be tough. Are you going to key on anybody in particular Saturday? No, sir. I just do my, do my job. We've all got a job on defense. If everybody does it, well, we should do all right. It would seem that you should uh, be able to defense the wishbone as well as any team in the nation. This must give you a little bit of confidence going into the game. Yes, sir. We, during spring training, that's what we run against our own offense's wishbone. And so it does make you feel a little better that you know what plays are going to be, you know, because you play your own plays. And so that will help us out some, I feel. There were a number of other charges that were filed when you were originally arrested. What happened to those? All those other charges were dismissed. Under normal circumstances, isn't the only thing necessary for a conviction on a DWI charge is to have a single policeman testify to the effect that you were drunk? That's uh, generally true, yes. Would it be fair then to say that right now they've got you between a rock and a hard place? Well, I, I think uh, uh, at least this is going. I'm, I'm innocent until proven guilty. And uh, it certainly is my position that I am not guilty. And I do have a right to a fair trial. I do have a right to due process. What would be the maximum sentence you could draw if you're convicted of driving while intoxicated? Uh, two years in jail. Can you be disbarred for serving a two-year sentence? No. The charge has been heard frequently in the past that the majority of the residents of the target areas did not play an active role in the selection of their representatives to the CAA board. On the other hand, there are those who feel that the convention approach used in the past was more acceptable to the neighborhoods than the newly instituted 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. voting booths. To find out what impact the CAA has had on the communities and to what degree the residents were aware of the election, we took our cameras to the Evans-Rosedale area and stopped at a nearby shopping center. 
Are you familiar with the community action agency elections that are coming up this weekend? No, not quite. Has anybody contacted you at all to talk about it? No, they haven't. Are you aware that you're supposed to have a representative on the community action board? Yes. Do you know who your representative is? No, I don't. Are you familiar with the community action uh, election that's coming up this weekend? Yes. Do you know who your representative is, or do you have a choice? I haven't saw him yet. Uh, no, I really don't know right now. I don't. Do you know where you go to vote? Well, yes, I know I go to vote. Are you going to vote? I sure is. Do you know who your CAA representative is? No, I sure don't. Have you ever been contacted by anyone from the CAA? No. Do you know that you can vote for someone to represent you on Saturday? No, I sure didn't. Would you vote if you knew how? Yes. Staff workers and community agents from the CAA centers have been knocking on doors in their neighborhoods, passing out leaflets, and talking out both the election and the general programs of the neighborhood centers. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Myrtle Hawkins. I work for the Community Action Agent Center. And this morning, I'm passing our bill for talking about our community meeting that we will have uh, Thursday night, October 7 at uh -huh. 7.30, talking about the community problem. And I sure would like for you to come. The voting places will be open from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. this Saturday at eight locations in Fort Worth, on the far north side at the NAI Center, 3250 North Main, on the near north side, two addresses, 2137 North Commerce and 2916 LaSalle. On the near south side, you can vote at the Amanda McCoy Center, 2006 Worth, or at the Richmond Center, 1348 East Richmond. On the far south side, the Worth Heights Center at 309 East Mason, to vote in the Far East, vote at the Stop 6 Center, 1809 Amanda, in Como at the Como Center, 5900 Libby. Some general observations in the post-election CAA status. It is hopeful to note that governmental agency representatives who make up one-third of the board have begun to attend meetings again. For a time, it was rare indeed that they bothered to show up. There seems to be a more cooperative, hopeful spirit among the third segment of the board as well, the segment made up of representatives of the service-type organizations. It would be less than fair to say that a sudden change for the better has come to pass than to say that a lot of hard times have gone by the boards and, as should be expected, lessons have been learned which will make the future better. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
four desks full of weapons out here. They were managed. They managed to fashion these between the two uh, riots in the hill. Well, of course, uh, I think if you look at most of this stuff, uh, just describing what I can see from here, you'll find a lot of spoons that the uh, that are sharpened. Uh, we find a lot of uh, pieces of heavy metal objects, uh, such as when they broke up the uh, wash basins and uh, they tie them on a lanyard and it makes a good club and be swung. Mm -hmm. As you look at this situation right now, Sheriff Jones, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to stop it from happening again? How am I going to stop it from happening again? Yes, sir. I don't know that you can stop it from happening again as long as you have outside agitation. My case was not set for trial yesterday. Both Judge Orvis and Assistant District Attorney Edmund Anderson knew it was not set for trial. They both knew that my attorney, Warren Burnett, was in trial in San Angelo. Although my case was orig originally set for trial yesterday, it was reached scheduled by agreement between Mr. Anderson and Mr. Burnett for November 22nd. Mr. Burnett has told me that Mr. Anderson promised to convey that agreement to Judge Orvis. Such agreements are routinely honored throughout the state, including Dallas County. At this final General Assembly of the Texas Municipal League Convention here in Houston, Dallas City Councilman Jesse Price got his controversial anti-school busing proposal tacked on to what was a relatively harmless city policy resolution. The original resolution vaguely urged the state give more power to cities and preserve home rule. Anti-busing slipped in by changing the word cities in that resolution to local governments which has the effect of saying the Municipal League discourages state or federal intervention in any local affairs. Also today, a proposed amendment to virtually indict the Texas Legislature as an amendment to that resolution was defeated, but the Assembly did urge a Constitutional Revision Committee for the Texas Constitution, and another res resolution asked Governor Preston Smith to add enough state motor fuel tax for the state to totally pay for highway right-of-way through cities. The effect of this three-day convention has been to serve notice on state and federal officials that cities in Texas want more say in their own government and that they may just be willing to fight to get that more say. Bill Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Texas Municipal League Convention in Houston. The false assumption that the poverty of the ghettos is best attacked directly through the war on poverty, welfare, and the countless other ghetto-oriented programs have caused white people to overlook the more basic issue of racist attitudes and institutions that shut black people off from the instruments of self-determination. A problem cannot be solved unless it is attacked at its roots. But when the roots are found entwined in the lives, communities, and occupations of white people, it is far easier for them to place the blame elsewhere than to face up to their own responsibility. Vast welfare bureaucracies and anti-poverty programs are created to buy off and placate the rage of the black communities. When you decide that you're going to use your body uh, to protest. <clears throat> this protest is an ethical, honest protest and it never proved nothing. I haven't hurt anybody but Dick Gregory if it comes to that. What you use the fast for is not to, to impress the tyrants or the fools or the degenerate folks, but to rally decent, honest people around. And this I'm happy with. My friends who thought Vietnam was too far in their own little way and worrying about my health, they're getting concerned with Vietnam now.
Well, Oklahoma's got a fine ball club, and we know it, and I'm sure they know it. And it's going to be a tough game. I I think we have the team to win, but I, like I say, I'm sure they think they have the team to win too. So it's going to be a tough ball game. What do you know about their uh, interior offensive line? Well, we uh, we've looked just at one reel of them so far, so I, it's hard to say a whole lot about them yet. We'll look a lot more at them before we play them. But they're good sized boys, a lot faster than most, and uh, they're quick openers, so they're going to be pretty tough. Who will be playing opposite you, and what blocking assignments do you expect to be executed in your direction? Well, I, I can't tell you the boys' names just yet. I haven't, haven't even looked at their roster. They don't have it up yet. The charge has been made frequently in the past, and not without validity, that the majority of the people in the target areas of Fort Worth not only did not participate in elections to name their representatives to the CAA board, but they did not, in fact, have any significant awareness of the CAA or its functions. To the credit of the agency, it should be reported that if the people don't know about this Saturday's election, it isn't because the agency didn't try to get the word out. Staff workers and community workers from the CAA centers in Fort Worth have been walking through their target areas, knocking on doors and passing out leaflets, telling people about the election and about the services of the CAA. The polls will be open on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at eight locations in Fort Worth. On the far north side at the NAI Center, 3250 North Main. On the near north side, two addresses, 2137 North Commerce and 2916 LaSalle. On the near south side at the Amanda McCoy Center, 2006 Worth, and the Richmond Center, 1348 East Richmond. On the far south, Worth Heights Center at 309 East Mason. On the far east, the Stop 6 Center will be one voting place. That's at 1809 Amanda. And in Como, the Como Center at 5900 Libby. The only requirement to vote is that you be able to prove that you live in the neighborhood where you cast your vote. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move at a CAA Center in Fort Worth.
Coach Royal respects you a great deal. Uh, he says you never have a bad game. You either have a super game or a solid game. Does this make you feel good going against Texas? Yeah, I do feel pretty good going against Texas this week. Uh, I didn't have that good a game against them last year because I was a sophomore. I didn't know anything. So I got a, a little experience in my belt, so I should do a lot better this year than I did against them last year. Running the wishbone, as is Texas, uh, would you be able to defense it a little bit more since you work against it every day? Yeah, I think so because uh, uh, the defense has practiced a whole lot against the offense during spring ball, you know. And uh, I kind of like to run against the wishbone because it's, it's a challenge to read the, uh, to get a chance to read the plays. And if you can do them pretty good, well, you can have success against the wishbone. Do you think the Longhorns will suffer a little bit without uh, Phillips in there? What do you know about Wigginton as a quarterback? Um, uh, Wiggins is a pretty good quarterback, but uh, I don't know if uh, Phillips and them are not going to play because I remember last year uh, Texas uh, told a lot of stuff about Wooster being hurt last year and he played, so uh, I don't know. It might be just a gadget or then again he might be hurt. But uh, at any rate, uh, I think uh, Wiggins is a nice quarterback and he can run the uh, triple option just as good as Phillips can. Okay, good luck, Raymond. Thank you.